Hi guys, it's Vif Mitchell's Warhammer Tactics Series and today we're gonna discuss the most secretive and mysterious guys out of all the Space Marines chapters, the Dark Angels. And without further ado, let's talk about their competitive use. And as tradition dictates, our first stop on this happy trail of overpowered Space Marines are their strength. I'll never stop saying this, if you want to play an army well, you need to know what it is and isn't good at. Skipping the first obvious part about them being Space Marines, which they obviously are. They are a very universal, well-rounded chapter. It's one of the reasons why I like them so much. They do everything very well and they are very resilient. And much of that universality comes from them having two parts to their army, a fast Ravenwing and a resilient Deathwing. And with those two parts of the army come a lot of unique units that change the style of play for these Space Marines a lot compared to their ordinary brothers. We're gonna have a detailed look at these uh, units in the army composition section later in this video. Their chapter tactics surprisingly is one of the most lackluster ones uh, out of all the Space Marines chapters, however most of their strength is in their detachment rules and super doctrines. Plus one to hit if you didn't move this turn is a very strange rule, It's it may be beneficial for say a unit of infantry that stays on the home objective or a tank maybe, because the chapter tactic obviously applies to all of your units. And also it's very important to for example, if you are in combat with the enemy on their turn, so you didn't actually move in this movement phase, it was your enemy's movement phase. So yeah, there are some uses for this chapter tactic. It's obviously not bad, having something is always better than nothing, but it's one of the weaker ones out of all the Space Marine chapters. And the second part is probably not even worth mentioning, because Deathwing are fearless and you are probably not running anything more than mm, three or five models in the Ravenwind part of the army, so you probably won't be failing morale at all. Now their wondrous abilities. First of all, the Jink ability that all the Ravenwind units get. It's basically boils, boils down to a 5 up and 1 from ranged attacks and a 4 up and 1 if you have advanced. And the Inner Circle gets the wonderful permanent transhuman on all of their units and they are fearless. They also have a problem with falling back, so if you decide to fall back, you need to roll 2d6 and not roll higher than your leadership characteristic, which will probably be very hard because most of your units will have leadership 9, so rolling uh, 10 basically on 2d6 is pretty hard. And if your whole battle plan revolves around your single unit falling back, you can use the two command point stratagem to fall back automatically and also it enables you to shoot this turn. You cannot charge uh, again, but you can shoot. Obviously, these two abilities, the 5 up and 1 from ranged attacks and the permanent transhuman are incredible. Uh, your bikers being able to shrug off some very heavy firepower when they did not have any save against it without the drink ability is incredible. And the permanent transhuman is something that is very hard to ignore when the best weapons usually to kill the terminators are the strength 8 a high AP damage 3 weapons, which will be highly affected by this ability, wounding on 4s instead of 2s. If you couple that with, say, an apothecary that gives them a 6 up track, so this damage 3 weapon is not guaranteed to kill a terminator each time the saving throw is failed. It makes them very, very resilient. And their super doctrines are as follows. In the Devastator Doctrine, so your first turn, you get plus 3 inches to the move characteristic of your Ravenwind models, and you can also shoot and advance, however you will suffer the penalty for advancing and shooting with the assault weapon. So if you have a heavy weapon, you can still shoot, but suffer the penalty. And in the Assault Doctrine, your Deathwing gets a very powerful buff. They reroll all wounds in melee against characters and models with a wound characteristic of 8 or more. The Deathwing stuff is not bad in combat already because they are Space Marines, but this uh, takes it to the next level, especially considering that you have a way to turn this buff on early. Their Interomancy Discipline is one of the best disciplines out of all the Space Marine supplements. It has all the stuff you need, the Fight Last debuff, OPSEC turn off, and you can also turn on full reroll to hit and wound on a single unit. It's incredible. 
and wonderful detachment bonuses that I've mentioned earlier. You get a full 3 command point refund for your Vanguard or your Outrider detachment if it's pure uh, Ravenwing or Deathwing, either or. And the only other rule that you need to follow is that your Warlord should be the part of this detachment, so you can't refund for a Vanguard and the Outrider. You need to choose one, so you will be spending the three command points if you decide to have both of these detachments in your army. Also, you get OPSEC on your Bikers and Outriders in the Ravenwing detachment, and your Deathwing Terminators and any other Terminators aside from the Deathwing Command Squad and Deathwing Knights in the Vanguard Detachment. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain why the OPSEC is so important in this game. Everything revolves around those objectives. Dark Angels have an incredible selection of relics and traits. Traits are probably my favorite part here. And the Interrogator Chaplain is arguably one of the best combat chaplain combos that exists in the supplements of the space marines they also have some good secondaries especially the stubborn defiance that you will probably be using in each of your games later in this video we will have a thorough look at the secondaries of the dark angels so don't worry and wait for it but each army has its weaknesses and what are the weaknesses of the dark angels first things first they have very rigid uh, detachment requirements when you start building their list you will find that out very soon for example, if you want to include a Librarian into your Deathwing Vanguard detachment, you either have an option of Ezekiel, or you should go for the Terminator Librarian, because he has the Deathwing keyword. If you want to include your Dreadnought, for example, into the Deathwing, you need to pay 15 points for Rites of Initiation, which doesn't give him anything, uh, and you won't be able to use any extra rules, or you don't have any, the Transhuman, because it's only for the infantry models. It's just a tax that you have to pay for using a Dreadnought in the Deathwing Detachment. Though it's not so dire as it might sound, if you have the models, you will be able to create a coherent force out of your collection. Next problem is the one that we encounter in most, if not all, of our Hyper Elite Space Main forces. It's the lack of the command points. The Dark Angels, like many other supplements, don't have any ways of generating command points in the 9th edition, which is very sad because we have a lot of things that we need to buy with those command points, most of them pre-game. The only usable way you can get more command points is by including Azrael in your army. You'll get two extra command points for making him your warlord, which is not a bad thing, he's not a bad character, we'll talk about him later in the video in the special character section. Next problem, the Deathwing part of the army is very very slow. Uh, the 5 inch move terminators and the blade guards with their 6 inch move, they aren't the best choice for a marathon. Your fast stuff belongs in the Ravenwing and you can't unfortunately include vanguard vets in the Deathwing because that would be probably too OP. Ravenwind on the other hand are very fast, but they are pretty easy to kill in combat because their invulnerable save does not affect melee attacks. So you need to be extra careful with them. You don't want your enemy to just pop off a couple of fast units and leave your army with no quote-unquote limbs. There are a lot of great stratagems that we're gonna talk about later in this video. For example, the two command point stratagem Swift Strike that allows you to move after you have fought with your Ravenwind unit, which is incredible considering they have a 14 inch move usually. And lastly, the Deathwing, even though they are tough, I don't want you to think of them as unkillable. There's nothing unkillable in the game of Warhammer 40k, and they are certainly not that. If you come up against an enemy with massed strength 4 high AP attacks, your permanent transhuman will do nothing for you. For example, the Thousand Suns Bolters, the Gin Stealers, and Lightning Claws, all of these things are very popular in the meta right now, and there will be a lot of things like that they, that can kill your Terminators pretty easily all things considered. Most of the times I recommend building a balanced force and in this case, in the case of Dark Angels, I think that building a balanced force is the way to go. 
And the recipe here is pretty simple, I think. The Ravenwind should be your fast and shooty supporting stuff, and your Deathwing should be your sledgehammer tough and fighty. When it comes to Deathwing, we don't have that many choices. We have the Deathwing Terminators or the regular Assault Terminators, which I won't recommend because you have less war gear options there. The Blade Guard Vats and the Deathwing Knights. These are your three main choices. The main building block should be the Deathwing Terminators because they get the OPSEC from the first company detachment rule. Blade Guard, on the other hand, they don't get OPSEC, but they are very, very cheap and with the permanent transition human they're extremely point sufficient that's why i think building your force around a part of the deathwing terminators and the part of the blade guard vets is the best choice thanks to the additional war gear options of the deathwing terminators which combine the regular terminator squad and the assault terminator squad you can build them to be the all-round unit that can fight and shoot as well. You can build a full squad of storm bolters and cycle missile launchers. You can combine shields and thunder hammers with the storm bolters and the cycle missile launchers, or go for the full melee squad of lightning laws and storm shoots thunder hammers. The choice is yours, it depends on what other stuff you have in your army, how much shooting you have, how much combat you have. You will have to figure that out on your own. But having at least 10 or better 15 Terminators in your Deathwing Detachment is a good rule of thumb. Nice combination, I think, having 10 Deathwing Knights as your main heavy hitter in combat and a 10-man shooting squad of Stormbolters and Cyclone Missile Launchers in Deep Strike. Because the Deathwing Knights have an awesome damage output, especially if you spend two command points when fighting monsters or vehicles for no fall too great to subdue. Uh, that gets you an extra point of AP and plus one to wound. As for the Ravenwing, there are a lot of choices here, but I'll mention the stuff that I think is very much necessary. The Apothecary on bike is one of the best characters that you can include in your army because reviving uh, 43 or 50 point terminators is incredibly effective. The bike gives him a bigger base so his 3 inch aura of feel no pain is even bigger and with a 14 inch move he can get to the places and units that need his help. The Ravenwind Dark Shroud is another thing I highly recommend. A minus one to hit in a 6 inch aura from ranged attacks is extremely powerful, especially when it's applied to terminators that come back up each turn and have 6 up shrug, can be healed by the apothecary and uh, have permanent transhuman. It costs 130 points and I believe that it's worth it. Because for most of your opponents it will be a huge bullet magnet because they will be trying to remove that minus one to hit aura from you and this is when you use the one command point stratagem to bump up the vehicle's invulnerable safe to a four up and it will be pretty hard to deal with this thing because it has uh, nine wounds a four up and one and minus one to hit from its own aura so it's definitely worth 130 points. Outriders and bike squads aren't half bad in the Ravenwind detachments thanks to that 5 up in van and the OPSEC. Uh, they are pretty cheap, especially the bike squads. Outriders I think are still a bit, uh, cost a bit too much for 50 points. A bike is a little bit steep. However, with the OPSEC and 5 up in van, the 50 points mark I think is uh, manageable. However, if you want something with a little bit more oomph to it, I recommend a unit of five Black Knights. They don't get the OPSEC, however, they are very fast, they are pretty durable, especially if you use the right stratagems on them. They have three wounds each, toughness five, three up safe, the uh, obvious five up and one from the Jinx ability. They have Plasma Talents, so ten shots per five uh, Black Knights at strength eight AP three and damage two overcharged, and you can use the uh, Weapons of the Dark Age stratagem on them to bump that damage up to three or possibly skip the overcharge step if you don't want your bikers to overcharge and die. Obviously you can just bring a captain with them but if you don't have that option the weapons of the dark age can be a way out. However as a more reliable source of high power shooting I recommend either the invader ATVs or the attack bikes with multi-melters. The invader ATVs are 
more resilient because they have more wounds point per point and they have the same weapon but the attack bikes are cheaper and they have the core keyword which is very important they can get the rerolls from the characters the choice is yours i myself am a more of a fan of the invader tvs especially considering that you can use the transhuman stratagem on them and protect them from some of the high powered shooting but the attack bikes aren't bad either a great way to mess with your opponent is by including a deathwing command squad of two lightning claw terminators you can protect your characters with them you can deep strike them to steal an objective from the opponent you can do some actions with them and they are a great unit for 70 points they are very resilient because they still get the inner circle rule so they are fearless and have permanent transhuman of course the fearless part for them is useless but the permanent transhuman is very much useful as for the hqs the bare minimum i think is a single librarian and an interrogator chaplain a librarian should be either the chief librarian or the ezekiel if you want your powers to go off reliably and the interrogator chaplain is needed for our favorite canticle of hate and litany of hate to reroll hits and get plus two to charges and plus three to consolidations and pile ins as you'll see in the synergy section the interrogator chaplain is also great as a counter charge threat as for the troops the choice is obvious here the assault intercessors are the cheapest and the infiltrators are the most useful once you probably won't need a single squad of those in your force because you will be using the vanguard and the outrider detachments but if you need a patrol for example to build a mixed detachment in addition to your vanguard with deathwing for example the assault intercessors and infiltrators are the way to go special characters i think that ezekiel is the must-have model here out of all these four guys he gets plus one to cast for entire man's disciplines he's the chief librarian so he knows three powers and denies two he's okay in a fight he has a six inch order of permanent shock assault for your current character units and it's incredibly useful for your terminators that only get two attacks if they didn't charge he should know three powers i think the warp charge six aversion which is minus one to hit on an enemy unit and minus one attacks on them if they are within six inches of the psyker the warp charge six mind worm which is a fight last debuff and the warp charge seven righteous repugnance the full reroll to hit and wound in melee there's also option of changing the aversion to the engulfing fear which is a warp charge seventh power and it's a minus one leadership to the enemy unit turns off uh, the actions if you roll higher or equal to the leadership characteristic on your psychic test and the most important part is that it turns off Obsec. And Ezekiel is pretty buffy as well. He has a 4 up and 1 to upsec 5 wounds and he is inner circle so permanent transhuman again for him. So if you need a librarian and I think that you need a librarian in any Dark Angels list I recommend Ezekiel very much. Next is the Ravenwind Telemaster. He is a very fast lieutenant. He is a good supporting firepower unit especially if you give him the brilliant strategist warlord trait so he can turn on the devastator doctor for him again and again and it's very important for his assault cannon which has AP1 and the heavy bolter which has again AP1. He can also select one enemy unit visible to him and the all Ravenwind models units, uh, core units that are within six inches of him uh, ignore light cover on that selected enemy unit which is not bad so if you are in the market for a lieutenant the ravenwind town master is a great choice and he's not extremely expensive he is pretty expensive for 175 points but for what he does for the amount of firepower that he provides i think it's adequate Next is the Azrael. He is a chapter master, so he can select an, a unit in the command phase, and that unit gets plus one to hit for the entirety of the battle round. He also gives you two command points if he is your warlord. He can deny a psychic power once per battle he provides a six inch aura of four plus and vulnerable save for your infantry and bikers against range attacks which is probably his most important ability even though you should probably be hiding behind obscuring terrain if for some reason you can't hide that four up and one will really help with your survivability both on your terminators that don't have shields and your bikers he's also not a bad fighter with six attacks at strength six ap4 and damage two and mortal wounds on sixes he costs 160 70 points which is not bad and not great either it's an okay price i think for such a 
powerful character. And the last but not least is Samael. He's the Ravenwind chapter master. Uh, so he can again select a Ravenwind this time unit to have full rerolls to hit until the end of this battle round, until the start of your next command phase, to be precise. He is very beefy. He has a 4 up and 1, 8 wounds, toughness 5, and he's very, very fast with 15 inches of movement and the fly keyword. If you are looking for a captain, he's probably the best option you can go for, uh, unless you want to run Azrael, which he's obviously also doubles up as the captain. The Samuel is not bad in the fight. Again, he has 5 attack strength 8 on the charge of strength 6 otherwise, AP4 and damage 2. I already talked a lot about damage 2 on the characters. I don't like the damage 2 because of all those damage reductions powers, but if you are targeting something that doesn't have the reduced damage by one rule, it's an okay profile. 150 points for the character of this sort I think is a fair price. These secondaries, let's address the big elephant in the room, the stubborn defiance. We all know how good it is and it's really that good. You basically need to stand on an objective or with your OPSEC unit through the game and if you manage to stay there throughout the game you get 15 points and any objective that has these requirements is a great one of course there is a caveat here because you need to stay on that objective consecutively so you need to put something there that is not uh, easy to be blown off like the deathwing terminators for example. But from numerous games against Dark Angels, I found out that it's very hard to deal with that unit sitting on an objective if they are not a, a unit of five intercessors, of course, which they shouldn't be. Uh, they should be a unit of terminators only. But it's hard to find the necessary firepower to dedicate to dealing with that unit. And in most cases, the enemy your opponent will forget about that squad for the entirety of the game trying to deal with the rest of your army next up the purge the enemy category the martial interdiction it's a typical challenge secondary uh, i've already talked about them a lot in the previous how to play videos for the other chapters they aren't very good you are far better off taking for example the assassination or the bring it down depending on what force you are facing so i do not recommend this one though it's not bad as far as the challenge secondaries go and the last but not least is the no mercy no respite category the death on the wind you score two victory points each time an enemy unit is destroyed by an attack made by a raven wind model from your army that moved 12 or more inches during the movement phase of that turn or made the charge move that turn so you need to move and shoot or charge with your uh, bikes and kill something and the secondary has no cap on it that's the thing i like about it you can kill a couple of units in the shooting phase then charge and kill another one and suddenly get six points and then in the next turn kill a couple of uh, units and get four more and now you already have uh, 10 point 10 victory points for just killing something which is very easy to do for the space mains usually and of course we can't use both the stubborn defiance and death on the wind in a single game so if you have to choose i recommend to choose the stubborn defiance because it's easier to stand on an objective than killing your opponent's units the only exception to that would be facing an army that will easily get to your objectives no matter what you do like gin stealer cults or harlequins with their double move the craft war worlds with their quickening or quicken i think it's called uh if the opponent is guaranteed to reach your objectives and mess with your plans for the stubborn defiance there may be an argument in taking the death on the wind instead. Now my favorite category, the synergies. If you decide to run Deathwing Knights, I recommend to spend one command point on marked for command and give your sergeant the mastercrafted flail so that the flail gets damage 3. It's extremely powerful in it because the extra damage is not lost when it's uh, enough to kill a model and you have some damage left over. It's not lost, it carries over on the next model in the unit like the mortal ones do so whenever you have more damage more damage will get carried over so your single sergeant can possibly kill up to 
12 of single wound models, which is incredible. It's especially important for a squad of Terminators with low quantity and high quality of attacks. They don't want to get stuck in a one wound model hordes like gin stealers or gin stealer cults, anything like that. If you have at least one 10 man blob of Terminators, which I recommend to have in your Deathwing Force or your Dark Angel Force, I would consider taking a Deathwing Ancient and upgrading him to the Chapter Ancient for 20 points. You'll get an ability to select in your command voice one infantry squad uh, within six inches of him and they'll get plus one to hit until the start of the next command phase which is very strong for your terminators with thunder hammers but that's not it you can also give him the pendant of remembrance relic that allows you to select one terminator or any infantry core unit within six inches of him and that unit gets minus one damage for all the incoming attacks and I think I don't need to remind you how powerful that is on the Terminators. We all know how hard it is to kill the Blight Lords of the Death Guard. And the Chapter Ancient upgrade also allows you to give the Ancient the steadfast example Warlord trait, which is a buffed up rights of war. You get OPSEC on your core units, and if that unit already had OPSEC, it counts as double the models. So yeah, Ancient isn't bad, especially considering that you can give him Thunderhammer and Stormshield in the Dark Angel's army, so he will be able to stand up for himself in a fight. Remember I've told you about using a 10-man squad of Stormbolters and Cyclone Missile Launchers coming from Deep Strike? Well, the best way to use them is with the one command point Deathwing Assault Stratagem that provides them with a plus one to wound for all of their shooting attacks, which is extremely important, especially for the Storm Boulders. And if we remember that the Deep Strikes are coming from turn two, so your Tactical Doctrine will be in effect, all of those Storm Boulders having minus one MP and wounding anything with plus one to wound is very powerful. I remember being on the receiving end of that firepower, and when two of my Redemptor Dreadnoughts with the five up and one just vanished into thin air in a single shooting phase I was very impressed. And the best part about them is that it's not it. If after you have shot, you have the charge phase, and you can charge with 10 Terminators with Chain Fists, and they will pretty much munch through anything that you put in front of them, especially if you help them with the Canticle of Hate from your Chaplain. Of course, the Fury of the First Stratagem will also help here. Getting boss 1 to hit on your shooting or melee attacks is extremely powerful. You can even do a very strange thing and use the Steady Advance for 2 command points on your shooting stuff and get actually plus two to hit because you will negate the minus one to hit for the heavy weapons and get plus one to hit for your chapter tactic. The build for the Master of Sanctity I think is an obvious one. You should get him a jump pack so he moves fast. Get him the Teeth of Terror because it's the only chaplain that can have the Stardust Chainsword and we can't miss this opportunity to have a damage three Teeth of Terror for us. The Warlord traits will be the wiser rater to get those litanies on twos, which is extremely powerful and important. And the Fury of the Lion Warlord trait, which helps both your Dark Angels units around the Chaplain and the Chaplain himself, bumping the strength of his Chainsword up to Strength 7. And even Strength 8, if we consider the Mantra of Strength. And he will be also rerolling all wound rolls against characters and 8 plus wound models in, if he's in the Assault Doctrine. You can also put him into Assault Doctrine with the help of one command point tactical appraisal stratagem. It's a wonderful stratagem considering that you get both the AP from the Assault Doctrine early with, the, with it and you get the rerolls from the Implacable ability. The only difficult part about the strat is that you have to be on the table, your unit has to be on the table in your command phase, so you can't use this on something that is in deep strike, which is something that you should remember. Now for the wonderful stratagems of the Ravenwing. First one is full throttle. You basically get plus 12 inches for your movement, but you can't shoot or charge after that. There are a whole bunch of situations where that can be helpful. If you need to steal someone's objective, if you need to hide your unit of bikers for the next turn, there are a multitude of other options here and it's a great strat for one command point. Next is the swift strike, we've already discussed it. It's an incredible stratagem. You can really devastate your opponent um, physically and mentally if you charge his uh, unit, fight with your bikers, and then just 
pull out of combat and go on your merry way. It's very hard uh, for your opponent to not be able to retaliate in the same turn. And the last but not least is the two command points, the hand stratagem. By the way, the stratagems, they all get more expensive if you use them on units of more than five bikers, which I do not recommend. I recommend to run only units of three to five men. So the hand, it's basically a pre-game move when you already know whose turn will be taking place now. So you can, if it's your turn, you can move your bikers closer to your opponent. They must end that move within 9 inches of them, but it's not very hard, considering that the regular distance between you and your opponent is 24. So after moving 14, you will still be 10 inches away. But in your movement phase, you can obviously move again and charge or do anything that you please with your units, which is incredibly powerful. And if it's your opponent's turn, if your opponent is going first, you can move your bikers forward and hide them behind an obscuring terrain and charge your opponent in your next turn. And again, the two command point weapons of the Dark Age uh, stratagem that I highly recommend to use on anything that has a good plasma output. I still dream of a unit of 10 health blasters with help of Ezreal, providing them with a 4-up and 1 and full rerolls to hit. I'm not sure how competitive is that combination, but you can try and tell me later. If you use it on your, say, Landspeed of Vengeance, which is, by the way, another great unit to use as your firepower support in the Ravenwind detachment, you can get those plasma shots up to damage 4, which is incredible. What I really like about the Dark Angels as well is that they don't rely on a single relic that they, their whole army revolves around. They have a couple of good ones, like the Pendant of Remembrance that I've already mentioned, but they don't need relics to operate well. The Reliquary of the Repentant is a good example of that. It's a relic for the Ravenwind Biker, which is basically a 3-inch aura of invulnerable saves only being successful on a roll of 5+. plus. So uh, any models that have a 3-up and 1 or a 4-up and 1, they will only save on a roll of 5 up. It's very powerful, but again, non-essential. The Arbiter's Gaze is a great relic for the Talon Master. It allows him to ignore ballistic skill and hit roll modifiers and fire or watch on 2 plus. I mean, hit on 2 plus in Overwatch and ignore cover. Nice relic that can bump up his effectiveness as a shooting platform if you have the real estate in your command points. I think it's a nice thing to have on your character. The last three relics I think are good, but I don't recommend you to spend command points on them. You have a lot of things to buy here, your detachment costs, your warlord traits, that you need to have a lot of those in your army. So I don't think that you have the real estate for the Mace of Redemption or the Heavenful Blade. Don't get me wrong, they are good relics, but I don't think that it's wise in a competitive uh, point of view to spend command points on them. And here's a roster example. Uh, I have an Outrider and a Vanguard detachment here. In the Outrider I have Ezekiel with Mind Worm Aversion and Righteous Repugnance, uh, Ravenwind Apothecary with the Selfless Healer Warlord trait, Ravenwind Black Knights, five of them, Invader ATVs, two units of two, Ravenwind Dark Shroud. And in the Vanguard detachment I have an Interrogator Chaplain with the Fury of the Lion and Wiser Raider Warlord traits, the Teeth of Terror, as we will already discussed, and the Canticles of Hate and Mantra of Strength. In the Elites I have two five-man and one three-man Bladeguard Vet squad, one Deathwing Command squad with two Terminators with dual Lightning Claws, and one big blob of Terminators, five with Lightning Claws and five with Chain Fists and Storm Bolters, two of them have Cyclone Missile Launchers. And I'm not really sure which part I would leave on the Stubborn Defiance objective, either the lightning claws so that I can use the Deathwing Assault stratagem to fire with plus one to wound from Deep Strike or the Cyclone Missile Launchers leave them on the objective so that can they can shoot all game at the enemy if they uh, have the line of sight. Probably the second option is the better one, however it's something that can be experimented with. So that's it guys, I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.